Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching the big picture with me, Frank Pereira. Within three weeks of the budget announcement, the finance ministry today started the process of listing three rail PSUs, the IRCTC, IRFC and IRCON. The government is considering divesting a portion of the paid-up equity share capital through an IPO and has sought expression of interest from merchant bankers by March 16th. Media reports also suggest that the railways and finance ministries are not seeing eye to eye on some critical issues including finances. The finance ministry which has taken charge of presenting the annual accounts for the railways has asked the railway ministry to hear after remit the annual dividends it receives from the 14 central public sector units under the, its purview. Now on this edition of the big picture we will analyze the future of the Indian railways after the budget merger. Joining me on the program today are Prem Pal Sharma, former Executive Director, Board of Railways, Subodh Jain, former Member, Railway Board, Shalesh Patak, Member, Fiki Infrastructure Committee and CEO, City Infra Capital. Also joining me on the program today is TK Arun, Editor, Opinion, The Economic Times. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Shalesh, I'd like to start with you, of course. What do you believe, I mean, what are your thoughts on the merger with of the rail budget with the general budget is it a good thing uh, it is a very good thing according to me because in june 2014 when prime minister modi was being sworn in i had actually published a piece on uh, infrastructure in india part one where i had said that perhaps the first thing to do is to merge the two budgets let's remember that in 1924 when the railway budget was separated the railways were some 60 percent of the national economy today are much uh, and, and this led to a uh, a lot of uh, things being promised in the railway budget in independent India. I'm happy that in independent India, the first budget that combines the railway budget with the union budget, it's a welcome development for us, particularly considering that railway outlays have gone up this year. So the budgets for railway items have actually increased this year. TK Arun, the downside to this, of course, is the fact that several media reports have already suggested that the rail ministry and the finance ministry are not seeing eye to eye, especially on issues of finances. Now, did you expect this to happen so soon? I don't think that disagreement has anything to do with the budget being merged. See, you look at uh, companies like Indian Oil Corporation or ONGC, whose total revenues and expenditure are comparable or much bigger than the railways. Now, they don't present separate budgets, right? But they are huge, huge organizations whose expenditure matter for growth for the particular sectors in which they operate and for the economy in general. So it is fine for the railways also to be, uh, not to have a separate budget of its own. Now the issue here is how are railway finances, railway performance and our as for the railways going to be made transparent and available to the public in a way that it can, it is amenable to scrutiny. The large corporations of the government in the oil, energy, power, etc., they are listed companies and their accounts are published and they are accountable to shareholders and uh, analysts uh, who scrutinize their performance and uh, uh, financial results. Now, such a thing right now is not institutionally well placed for the railways. So, that has to be brought in place. Once that happens uh, and once the pro uh, ongoing project of converting their accounts into a commercial uh, format is completed, I see no reason whatsoever why there should be a problem, the railways budget being part of the railway general budget. Premal Sharma, the administration, uh, the railways has said, is going to continue like how it was uh, going on before in, or in the years prior to this merger of the budget as such. Do you see any administrative challenges somewhere al al along the way? Uh, first, I welcome this step, the merger. And not only the merger, even the preponding the real, sorry, whole budget, you know, the first one. Because we should, uh, we should not debate on whether it is on last, at the end of February or at the beginning. Because if we, in the one part, if it is, even if so, I will not go in more detail in that part. But if we have to make it effective for 1st of April, so the good decision was it should be made at the 1st of February. Anyway, second. The merger also, we should all welcome. As a real woman, I feel... There was a time in 1924, as rightly said by my friend, that 60 percent of that, because focus was on Indian Railway was an important part of the whole British infrastructure. The expenditure, 60 percent. Now the things have changed. So now continuing with the same position, or repeating the tradition, this and that, you know, fear. At least as a railwayman, I feel we should be progressive enough. Now the second part, that today some debate 
I think this has been unnecessarily raised that there is a conflict. There is no conflict. For anything change, always there we are on negotiating table. So now railway's view is, suppose our dividend is taken by uh, Mr. Finance, in my personal opinion, railway is feeling some incentive or some motivation should be with the railway because initially it was agreed upon that there will be no uh, that autonomy of expenditure and then that will continue. So if we were maintaining that, that autonomy or expenditure and their earning, so now the public undertaking profit automatically should go to the railway because ultimately the whole kitty is with the Ministry of Finance. So now uh, insisting on that ki now profit should go with us, I think is a, our IQ or standard of parliamentary debate in I feel should be uh, much, uh, the, uh, I expect should be uh, much more. Now, as a Mr. Finance, to some extent I agree, ki now since we are that the whatever money invested in the PSU, the railway is a part of Mr. Finance, so automatically whatever profit or etc. But in my opinion, the part autonomy should be allowed to be retained because the profit, if railway is uh, retaining that profit, that last point I would like to add, now in government sector hardly any room for motivation or incentive is left. Suppose if we, we take away that part also. So now then everybody will feel that he can now it's a part of the mystery of railway. So whether it is going in say in losses or profit, who cares? I feel after this debate, not conflict, the debate is welcome. Uh, the, sure. the future should be uh, the, in the interest of railways and sure. ultimately in the public. Indeed, the public. indeed, indeed. It should be for the public at the end of the day, and it also should be profitable. So, both Jen, you know, as far as the profits of the railways are concerned, the railways has not been a very profitable entity. How do we ensure that the railways continues to be profitable? I will not jump to the conclusion whether it was a good step or a bad step. Hmm. If such historical step has been taken, there should have been a larger purpose that what we are wanting to achieve. At the end of the day, it should lead to some efficiencies. It should lead to the better uh, fulfillment of the expectations of the people who, what they expect from the railways. I disagree uh, with my fellow panelists about the ONGC example or uh, Reliance example and this thing. You see, transport and railways, they have a role to play, which is of a strategic importance also. Today, if you want to go to Delhi to Bangalore, perhaps railway has the monopoly for 90% of the people. So, we thought that this merger will bring some kind of reform. It will lead to the pace of reforms in the railways. There are big plans of the bringing the bullet trains and uh, the traditional structure of railways which was so inward looking, which was so insulating and protecting, it was not permitting those changes to come. Somehow, in my opinion, this first merged budget has not uh, served that purpose. It is mostly an accounting exercise where uh, railways are fighting with the finance ministry that we thought we will get something more, uh, uh, something uh, extra beyond uh, working for it. Finance Ministry says that we have now promised you that. Say, when you, we gave you 9,000 crores of the uh, dividend relief, mm. then you have no right to have that dividend which uh, you were taking. Dividend is dividend. Sure. So, so, technically, Finance Ministry may be right. I am not an economist. So, I will not be able to comment it uh, in a conclusive manner. But we, a big opportunity is being frittered away in such... Uh, the small issue is being discussed. The thing is, railway needs investment. Sure. Without bothering about what has happened in the past, we should look forward. Say, there were, uh, it was given to the regional uh, leaders and so uh, the focus has changed. Whatever has happened, there is no point in recalling that and mulling over that. The fact today is, the private sector is eagerly looking for entry into this huge infrastructure opportunity and railways unless they are structured or it's not changed upside down they won't permit sure 
because they feel insecure. So that part, uh, some step, even if it would have been announced, I would have felt better. Indeed. Indeed. Yes, so that is the thing. That's Indeed. No, some, very, some very valid, uh, valid points so, that you have raised there. But uh, Shailesh Patak, is privatization the way forward? Is that what the railways requires or needs at this point in time? I don't think privatization of the railways is being talked uh, about by anybody. Definitely not the private sector. In fact, uh, if you ask us, the economic rate of return given by the Indian railways is far higher than the internal rate of return given by almost any other business. Because for a person to migrate from UP or Bihar to a Chennai or a Bangalore, it is much cheaper going by the railways than in any other country in the world. And this huge labor mobility has actually contributed to our national economy. Strictly from the private sector perspective, what we are enthused about is will efficiency of the railways go up? And you referred uh, to today's advertisements about IRFC and IRCON and uh, IRCTC. I think listing of these three entities by the DIPAM, the Department of Investment Public Asset Management, is a welcome step and this was announced in the budget. The big thing according to us is when you used to have the full railway budget, it was actually an occasion to play to the gallery. And it was all about announcements and not about commissioning or execution. This is a very welcome change when an integrated view is being taken of the transport sector. Now what is transport, Frank? Transport is nothing but for the private sector, getting a person or a commodity from place A to place B in the least possible time and the quickest possible, the least possible cost and quickest possible time. And in para 80 of uh, Finance Minister Jetley's speech, he says that the railway is under competition from other modes of transport and it urgently needs to regain its competitive edge. And I think this is a very welcome focus. So if the railways can become more efficient, if I can, instead of sending my goods from, let's say, Delhi to Coimbatore, if I can send my goods by train, I save time, I save money, if the railways manages its uh, task better. What are the four things that he has talked about in his speech? Number one is passenger safety. I think all of us, Indian citizens, should bother about passenger safety. Number two is capital and development works, which we are very interested in because that will give us deal flow and, and order base. Number three is cleanliness. I recently took a train from Delhi to Baksar, and I just hope that bio toilets get installed by 2018 as promised in the budget. And the fourth is finance and accounting reforms, what Subodji was talking about. So unless you get all these four going, the railways as a structure will not become more efficient. What we are also excited about is actually the large ticket projects like the dedicated freight corridors. Now if the DFC between Delhi and uh, Mumbai gets going by 2019, something that takes 14 days to move a container between Delhi and Bombay port will take 14 hours. That's a huge efficiency gain. Sure. We are very excited about the, the high-speed rail between Ahmedabad and Mumbai and the Japanese aid that's flowing in. And this will kickstart our own technological advancement in that field. We are very happy with the railway station development projects. So 10 projects are being developed by the Ministry of Urban Development in collaboration with the railways. And 23 have just been announced earlier this month by Railway Minister Suresh Prabhu. So as far as we are concerned, we want a better railways, we want a more efficient railways. The private sector is very happy. Indeed. All right. Tika Ramlina, taking the debate of the listing of PSUs forward, do you believe that it's a good thing? Do you believe that it's a step in the right direction? Oh, absolutely. See, let's understand one thing. Whether a sector is strategic or not, does not prevent it from taking a corporate form. Isn't power strategic? Isn't energy oil strategic? India's Oil infrastructure is completely in a corporate form. ONGC was a non-corporate which got a corporate form. Indian oil is a corporate uh, entity. The largest producer of power in the country, NTPC, is a corporate entity. The largest distributor of power uh, over long, long distances, power grid, is a corporate entity. So there's no reason why the railways will not, will not flourish as a corporate entity. Actually, not being a corporate entity and being part of the government actually inhibits its growth. So the first thing to do is actually convert the railways into one or probably more desirably into multiple corporations which will have a commercial culture and which will function far more efficiently, put into use the enormous amount of resources at the disposal of the railways. 
yes, the railways are completely vital. It is a very important part of the entire transport infrastructure of the country. So to make that transport infrastructure sufficient and efficient, we needed to have a corporate form. And once it is a corporate form, it is better for the company to be listed and for it to be accountable to the public and disclose information on a quarterly basis than otherwise. So, so my only complaint would be that only these small bits of the railways are now being listed. I would be happy to see if the entire, entire entity of the railways were converted into one or more corporations and they were all listed. Sure. Uh, Premal Sharma, you know the issue of transparency also has been raised on this debate. Do you believe that you know going forward that the railways is going to be far more transparent once the listing takes place, once maybe you know private players come into the come into the picture as well? I think we are playing with these words transparent efficiency. I think quite long. How does will it make a difference if railways a separate budget or budget is merged with the finance? Because transparency is the core issue for every sector. It's, it's not that whether budget is separate, but I think some points I agree, uh, I disagree with my friend that corporatization, mm -hmm. Indian oil, Indian oil and Indian railway cannot be compared. Maximum you can compare this with the Ministry of Defense, but we have diluted in infrastructure or the total, uh, the everything in the Indian railway, but not in Ministry of Defense. So I will not go in the, for privatization of Indian railway, but we have to somehow uh, work on that, how to uh, motivate people with the, uh, with the private uh, uh, efficiency because now our, what our friend is saying if you see the cleanliness and everything is not in a, a good shape so maybe the government make, making an effort an experiment so let's hope if budget is merged uh, if you remember this recommendation of Niti Aayog in the last June 16 when they suggested the railway budget should be so there was a debate uh, that if it uh, budget is uh, merge then our uh, decision making will be affected. Decision making means if we want to restructure or fare, invest, this and that. For last hundred years, we were independent. We were static. We have not done anything. So now the uh, world over, the challenges are there. So I think within this structure, even if merger is there, uh, uh, room will be there. So, but, uh, but with the one but, uh, the dividend and some motivation has to be with the railway so that it's the original, uh, the plan when we had a correspondence with the Ministry of Finance that our autonomy and this will be maintained will be intact. So, so, so I want to understand something. So, what changes now? Is there anything that changes as far as the railways, uh, railways is concerned? So, uh, but I feel the negotiation. They are saying a dividend should go direct to them. We are saying a dividend should be no, apart from that. Apart from that, from the functioning structure of the railways, every, every, everything continues to remain the same. Or no, is there no, any no. What uh, the just one? I have been joint secretary parliament also for six, seven years. I think we can save our time on debates. The populist uh, announcements that train will run without realizing that our thousands of projects are as it is. We just announce hundred trains. And they are never implemented. So we, we wanted to avoid, because Niti Aayog is recommended, so that some of this local Lubhavan or populist uh, declaration in the parliament, in our second part. Parliament is a very precious institution. And I think the debate in the past, for last 50 years, whether it is uh, China war or uh, language issue or um, uh, lately nuclear disarmament or uh, nuclear agreement, everything. Is, parliament cannot become the, so. Parliament time is very precious. So instead of wasting exclusively by allotting railway budget time and then debating and then the whole hall is vacant and nobody is to listen there. So I think we can uh, uh, save the time. But simply emphasizing on that we can save our time, we have to look into that. If we are having or we are experiencing boycott of parliament sure. session after session. So okay. now if we are merged with this, if the debate is allowed, or uh, the focus is also, then I think it's the, in the national interest. Okay, we, we end up saving a lot of time, a lot of precious parliamentary time, time. and ensure that we, the process itself is far more streamlined is what you're saying by the yes. merger of this budget. But uh, what I still want to understand from you, Subhav Jain, is the fact that the functioning of the railways, the funding of the railways and those kind of aspects, does it change now or does it remain the same? As of now, it remains exactly the same. Hmm. Only some... Uh, dividend here, dividend there, that's all. No structural change has yet been brought in in the funding, financing and uh, the way forward also. 
maybe tomorrow uh, some changes may take place, but at least I am not aware of any roadmap in that direction. And uh, when it comes, then only I, it is better to react. We should let us not speculate that what will sure. come and what will not come. So, but, but do you see any challenges? Do you see any challenges along the Challenges way? are that we need to have, say, we raise the fears of the upper class. We find that people have moved away. So, we need to focus on our basic job of transportation first. Say so all those cosmetics, all those things will come later. If you are not able to transport the people or the goods, there is no point in doing anything, station development, this development and that development. They are all peripheral. So somebody has to take care of the basic objective of the railway, that I am here, I take the guarantee, that if I have booked your luggage, you will be transported. If I have sold you a ticket, you will reach. Maybe uh, if I cancel this train, I will accommodate you in some other train. But you will reach. I will not leave you. Accountability is key is what Accountability in basic core job. Sure. Sure. So maybe I am uh, wishing too much, but that is what, uh, if you do the business, you need to have a focus on that. And we keep on talking that we will bring business orientation, we will bring customer orientation. Uh, and uh, I'll just uh, say two things, you have not asked that question, but uh, one thing is the populist uh, announcements. In democracy, populist amounts are, uh, announcements are inevitable. It's only thing who does that, whether you do it outside parliament or inside parliament, and how responsibly you do the populist announcements. Because... Populist announcement by, by very nature means the public wants it. So, so if you are announcing that, you should be responsible. You feel, you, you should know that you are going to fulfill this announcement. And uh, then you are the first, which you said the three uh, PSUs which are being uh, and, uh, listed. listed up. It is a very good decision. And uh, as far as I have interacted with the people, the PSU bosses are happy. Because railway PSUs, that is one thing, whatever uh, you cannot uh, point out one railway PSU which has failed. Yeah. Our PSUs yeah. have performed immaculately well. I can say uh, my ministry uh, is the least interfering ministry in the PSU working. When you said make them CMDs, make them independent, take care of arm's length, railways reluctantly, but they did it. When they said the appointment will be done by the PSB, we did it. So, no. listing is not a problem. Listing means that government railway ministry will have further uh, uh, reduced role. So, some of the PSUs are so dependent on the railways, their revenue stream are not yet independent of the railway control. Those PSUs certainly cannot be listed. Indeed. All right. Shalish Patak. Yeah. Business, run the railways like a business and then you'll see some profit. Is that what the railways should be doing, run it as a business? Uh, far be it from us in the private sector to tell the railways how to run their business. But I do uh, recall my favorite saying about infrastructure. I am a student of infrastructure and, and financing. Uh, the saying is that where there is a will, there is a way. Where there is no will, there is survey. And for a long time, the railway budget was a vehicle of announcing surveys. And the next uh, newspaper headlines the next day used to say, new trains announced between X place and Y place. All of us knew that no new train would be started, but some one lakh provision, Subhoji would wear me out, one lakh provision would be made as a token allotment. This is, you know, this is uh, not really being fair to India. And now that uh, we have a very concerted focus on transport, I mean, look at the budgets. Railways has one third of the total transport budget. I have the numbers, 131,000 crores compared to a total transport allocation of, two, uh, infrastructure allocation of 241. So actually railways has received higher budgets this year. Uh, on the efficiency, I am sitting between two stalwarts from the railways. My friends in the railways are the best possible engineers in India. If there is a complex project to be executed in India, the railways has the best engineering talent for it. And we in the private sector actually can rely on the technical expertise of the railways to guide us. For instance, 
we are setting up two locomotive factories from the private sector, Maroda and Hajipur. Sure. We are getting mentored by the, I mean, my friends are setting it up. They are meant, getting mentored from railway officials. The issue is only this. The railways have great capability. They are held back by certain constraints. Uh, by the merging of these two budgets, is there a dramatic change in the way they operate? Probably not. That dramatic change actually has happened because Minister Prabhu has decentralized to a very large scale. And at the general manager level at the zone and at the divisional uh, uh, level with right. the DRM, a lot of things can get done, which is what the private sector wants. Point, point taken. Uh, I'm running out of time, so I'd like to get quick comments from all my guests here as well. T.K. Arun, you know, much has been said about bullet trains, fast-paced trains, and, you know, how India is going to get connected better with, these, with this new infrastructure, new technology. Is that what India requires or the Indian Railways requires at this point in time? See, if bullet trains are commercially viable, they should run. So I would not like Indian Railways to devote its scarce resources to developing bullet trains. If it is a commercially viable proposition, you provide the facility and private investors will come and run these trains. I am sure between centers like Mumbai and Ahmedabad, between Chennai and Bangalore, and such short hauls where it is faster to move a train than to go by plane, these bullet trains will be viable. And they should be allowed to prove their viability by leaving it to the private sector. But when you are starved for funds to deploy in safety, that money should not be deployed, diverted to creating so-called prestige projects, uh, running bullet trains. Let it be a separate thing, let it be uh, developed by the private sector. But let us understand that the Indian railways already are moving to a corporate form. Delhi Metro is a, is a company. The Konkan Rail Corporation is a company. The railways have started some 17 new joint ventures. All are companies. So, willingly, parts of the railways are actually getting corporatized. Now, right. the challenge is actually to get this done to the entire organization. Sure. And uh, Prempal Sharma, quick closing comment from you on how does the future of the railways look right now? After merger, I expect two things only. One, the operating ratio. If I'm investing 100, I must earn at more than 100. It's a uh, simple business. Second, if people demand, wants to go to Patna, Kolkata, Madras, anytime, it should be available. And now it is not. After March, again two months, then the Sarah holidays. So I, within these limitations, something, whether it is by merger or by any means. Now, but one, some, some suggestions also. We are providing concessions to senior citizens. 40% is any others uh, in this country, airlines or roadways providing this, so our finances taken away. Similarly, cancer patient, right. I am sympathetic, all facilities. So we have to control that finance also and then uh, provide some injection of motivation. So, Bhat Jain, quick closing comment from you, yeah. your concluding remarks. Whatever we may criticize or this thing, but Indian railways are here to stay. And we have to take care of this and everybody has to think that in which direction we have to go. This is the time where the world railways have uh, uh, proved that railway is the most eco-friendly and viable mode of transport. And they are making lines all over. Sure. And if we lose this opportunity, it will be like losing the opportunity at the time of industrial revolution. All right. On that note, we'll have to call it a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. Prempal Sharma, Subodh Jain, Shailesh Patak and T.K. Arun, thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. That's all the time we have. See you again next time.